As a kid, I was obsessed with the idea of trying to figure out a way where I could do what I loved for a living once I got older. When I would tell this to people, I would always get responses like, think of something realistic you could do. It was very clear that they were trying to discourage me. Now everyone has their own dreams and everyone wants to live a prosperous life that genuinely makes them happy and fully satisfied. This might sound insanely obvious, but if my assumption is correct, why do the majority of people become calloused by the realities of life and let their dreams slowly fade away? Why don't more people achieve the things they strive for? Four years ago, I got an opportunity of a lifetime. Dale is starting his YouTube channel. You should go over to his channel and check it out. My good friend John Hill was moving back to California after moving away to surround himself with other YouTubers so that he could work on his YouTube channel. We had known each other for a few years and become pretty close friends. Hey Dale, this is John. Dude, you're insane bro. I just want to show you how much I appreciate your existence by telling you to shut up and get out of my house. Now this was a dude who once had his professional skate career all lined up for him. When he made the decision to move away to work on his YouTube channel, I admittedly thought that this was the dumbest decision he ever made. Because I'm flying across this country. I thought he was shooting his skate career in the foot and throwing it all away. He literally had everything in place for him to make it as a pro skater. And a couple months before he moved back, we started talking again pretty regularly. I had actually begun watching his YouTube videos just out of sheer curiosity. And then slowly it became a guilty pleasure of mine. Now at this point in my life, I was in a terrible place mentally, working jobs that I hated, and I just couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with my life or what to even work towards. I was 25 at the time, and I had finally fully surrendered the idea that I probably wasn't gonna make a living skating or even with something skate related for that matter. By that age, your chances of making a living skating are slim to none. Now John is a self-starter. He's a real workhorse and he's always talking about and reading about self-improvement. This was something that we both had in common right when we first met. And I had my own personal experiences with this kind of thinking, especially when it came to my sobriety. And about a month before he moved back, he told me that he wanted to find someone that could help him work on his YouTube channel. And I had expressed interest in wanting to actually start my own YouTube channel seeing the kind of life that he had created for himself. So I told him I wanted to help him and that I wanted to start my own channel. Now I had always wanted to create a life for myself that I was happy with and proud of. Something where I didn't just go to work every day just to get off. Something where I didn't just work for the weekend. Something where I didn't just hate where I went every single day. And I always knew it was possible because you hear this story over and over again. But I never knew where to start or what to even do. I was always trying to put myself in place for the opportunity to present itself, but it never did. And like I said, I genuinely just didn't think it was possible anymore to make a living doing what I absolutely loved, which was skating, without either being pro or climbing the corporate skate ladder. Now, while watching John's videos for the last several months, I had slowly start to realize that John had attained the very thing that I had dreamt of doing. And seeing him do it made me feel like like it was finally attainable. I felt like there was an opportunity being presented to me. The missing pieces for creating this life that I have dreamed of started to feel like they were falling into place. Now he was visiting California a couple weeks here and there before he moved back to try to find a place. And once he started making trips back here and when he finally moved back, we started working together immediately. I was helping him with projects on his channel and we were hyping on my channel and I had grown sort of a cult following on his channel. And we did this for several weeks before I launched my channel and once I finally did I was blown away by the support so many people rushed over to my channel to watch my first video and to subscribe I think I gained like 10,000 subscribers within the first weekend which is insane the thing that I was most stoked on wasn't the fact that I became slightly internet famous or even the fact that I was a youtuber now but I got to escape the nine to five rat race I got an opportunity to start creating and building a life I actually wanted and I didn't go to college or trade school or really focus on anything else in my life other than skateboarding. I kind of devoted my entire life to skating. This was very literally the opportunity that I had been searching for. And once it showed up, I dove head first into this YouTube thing. Slamming! Oh God. That was good. 
I had this genuine rush and this like unlimited amount of adrenaline to just keep going every single day for hours and hours on end. We'd go out, we'd make videos, and I would edit in the mornings and edit at night, and I would have like 16 hour long days, even though I was working harder than I ever have in my entire life, especially for that entire first year of starting my channel, it didn't feel like work. Like I was genuinely caught up in the creation and inspiration of the moment. And that lasted for quite a long time. No one was hovering over me, no one was giving me orders, no one was telling me what to do, there were no legal procedures to like legitimize business or fill out all this, all this paperwork that you need to at a job, yet I was working. I was literally working and I was enjoying it. The possibilities actually seemed endless and I still feel that way today. Now for the last few years prior before starting my channel, I had bought a 35 millimeter film camera off of Craigslist for $50. It's the only camera I ever had and ever shot with. Now, when I started my channel, I knew that I wanted to like work on a project that I could share with my audience. And I was still very into shooting film at the time. And I never really knew a lot about the technical aspects of a camera, so I never really made videos about it. But I just knew that I liked to take pictures. I had made a magazine a few years prior and I knew right away that, that I wanted to make another one. So for the first couple of months of my channel, we would go out and we would skate and I would just shoot pictures of us skating and hanging out and doing whatever we did. And as I was trying to come up with a title or name for this magazine, I noticed a comment on every single YouTube video that I uploaded that read Slammin' by this guy named Glorified H. So the idea was, to have everything be created out of the community that has been cultivated around this channel. It felt romantic and sentimental to me. And this became another creative opportunity along with my channel. My channel and Slammin' now took on a symbiotic relationship. And it gave me even more of a reason to keep growing and to keep building this little empire that I was constructing. So while I was building my channel, I was simultaneously building my brand. And again, I was just floored by the support of this. It was a really wild feeling. I went from making these fun little magazines to eventually making t-shirts and from t-shirts to hoodies and from hoodies to pants and so on. Slowly but surely, Slammin' turned into its own clothing line and brand. I had always had a strong appreciation for clothing. And being a skater, this kind of comes with the territory. We worry about our shoes, our pants, our t-shirts, and when we feel better in the clothes that we're wearing, we tend to skate better. And even though I know that this is a placebo, it worked for me at the time. I wanted to look just like the skaters that I looked up to as a kid. And I remember fantasizing about having my own clothing brand at a very early age. And it still seemed like a far off distant dream, but if I was to dare think about it and think about how it was gonna happen, I definitely didn't think it was gonna happen like this. I was always more focused on skating anyway. Now the graphics for the shirts literally just started out by me printing my photos on them. And we did a couple logo shirts here and there as well. Then one day, about a year to year and a half into me starting my channel and brand, a viewer by the name of Anthony sent me a design. Now people would send me designs for Slammin' pretty often, and even though it was utterly flattering, I always hesitated using them. I was starting to develop a strict vision of what I wanted the brand to be. And when I saw Anthony's design, it looked oddly familiar, and not in the way that like I saw it before, but a familiar aesthetic. And it turns out we were both into the same type of music and came from the same counterculture. I told him to make some designs and send them my way, and it seemed as though both of our brains were operating from the same creative space and synced up together. So I hired him right away. He has since designed every single item of clothing for Slammin'. In each drop we do, each design and item gets more and more clean, more and more cohesive, more and more thought provoking. So it really started to feel like Slammin' was becoming a brand of its own rather than just YouTube merch. And not only has it become a brand of its own within this niche of a community that we have here, but it's created a family. My friends that I go out with skating every day now ride for my company. 
and I have the opportunity to show support for them and to help them climb up the ladder of life and give them the same opportunities that were once given to me. While continuously working and remaining consistent on all of this, it felt like slamming was almost starting to create itself. It's really hard to explain. It's like a painting or writing music, but instead that is playing itself out in real space and time. Not only did I never think that this is where I was gonna be at almost 30, I definitely didn't think that this is how it was gonna play out. Then it really did seem a million miles away. I thought the only way to skate and make a living was to be a pro skater. I had no idea when I was 18 that this was gonna be an available route. And when I actually sit down and think about it, this is much more than I ever could have asked for. We have just released our biggest, best, and most cohesive drop to date. Everything fits together and complements one another. I'm floored at how good every single item came out and I'm beyond excited to be able to share it with you guys finally. We've been working really hard on this behind the scenes for a while now. The pandemic did set us back, but it gave us the opportunity to really put our all into this drop and make it perfect. This is literally the feeling that I strive for. This is the high that I chase after. That feeling when you create something so utterly perfect and satisfying to you, and all it does is make me wanna keep chasing that high and keep growing and keep making better product and keep making better videos. I want it to inspire others as much as it inspires me. Because these are the same feelings I would get when learning learning a new trick or watching my favorite skaters video part or making an edit with my friends when I was a kid. I want to give those same feelings to other people. Really, I want to inspire others to go after their dreams in the same way that I was inspired when I was a kid. And honestly, I owe all of this to you guys for your support, for continuing to support every drop, for continuing to watch every video that I make. This year alone, I've had this overwhelming reminder of gratitude. And I find myself getting lost in the thought of being grateful for what has happened because I've realized over this last year that I did it. I achieved what I wished to achieve when I was a kid. I'm so grateful for all of this. I'm so grateful for you guys. I'm so grateful for this opportunity and I just wanna share it with everyone and inspire others to do this very same thing. We live in a world where people tend to project their insecurities on not just the environment around them, but the people that they surround themselves with regularly the most. It's easy to watch or listen to someone who has fucked up and not wanna make the same mistake they did. So most of us tend to play it safe. We'd rather settle for a mediocre life than struggle for a great one. Constantly worrying that we might never make it or that we wasted all that precious time for something that never happened. Now, I believe at the heart of this is fear. Fear drives most of us, if not all of us. This isn't a question whether it's a good or a bad thing, but rather, what do you fear most? Now, this will shift your perspective into thinking about what is it that you fear? My fear of failure could have easily kept me paralyzed in playing the safe game of life. But instead, I look at it more like that cliche of rather striving for something great and have failed than to never have strived at all. If I never tried, I'd question my entire life, what if? What if I would have gone for it? What if it would have worked out? People will always be quick to tell you you can't do something when they can't do it themselves. Especially when they've allowed themselves to become molded by what society is telling them they should do. Telling you to take the safe route rather than the more risky one, but with a higher reward. When you're a kid, your dreams seem like the only real thing worth fighting for. And as we get older, we tend to lose our grip on that and we tend to settle for the reality of life. Now I'm sure you've heard this story several times from several different people and mine is no different. I'm literally just another kid that resisted and couldn't let go of his dreams.